Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm going to be showing you an awesome special effects tutorial on how to make an explosion. And this is all going to be done in Vegas Pro 16. So before we get started, in the description below, I provided a link for an explosions effect pack that I made. You can easily Google these things as well and get free versions and royalty free versions of these effects. We got an explosion effect, a fire sound, and an explosion sound. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the final render is like. You're still alive? Okay, so we're going to be creating that effect. We're not going to create the intro part, I just added that for a little bit of dramatic effect. And to get started, you're going to want a clip of you tossing something or something you're wanting to explode. So this clip I have right here, I'm going to have that stuffed Pokeball explode. So first thing, we're going to play our clip and we are going to decide on a spot where we want it to explode. So right here, we play the clip and I'm going to have it explode right there. So when you choose and shoot your shot right here, you're going to want to record the spot where it's going to land for a good like 10 seconds. And then you're going to throw your, your object and have it land right there. So I'm going to have it explode right around this area. I'm going to duplicate this clip because I recorded a bunch of that same spot 10 seconds before. So I'm going to do right about there. And then I'm going to go right where the Pokeball's away. So this way when I want the Pokeball to explode, it's just going to disappear into the same shot. Like that. So, there's no real order to this, but I'm just gonna start off with a black spot. Explosions make fire, make explosions, and they make burn spots where they land. So, we need to hit right click, insert a new video track, and then right here is when it explodes. We're gonna go to media generators, solid color, and black, and we're gonna drag that over here. Let's trim it down to the edge of our clip, and then in here, let's go to the video effects, and then we're gonna go down to cookie cutter. And once we're there, we're gonna choose circle and drag it onto the black. And then we're gonna see all the effects we have to work with right here. So what I'm gonna do is change this to an oval. I'm gonna keep this at cut away and I'm gonna increase the feathering. To right about there looks pretty good. Kinda of looks like a real good burn spot. So also, what I wanna do is I'm gonna click in my timeline, go one frame back to where I can see the Pokeball, drag this over there so I can kind of guide where I'm going to be putting this. Let's open up the center option right here and drag it right here looks pretty good. That's covering the Pokemon entirely. Okay, let's drag that back now. And so usually that's going to happen after the explosion. So let's fade this in about five seconds and then right click on the fade and make it do a slow fade. So like that, that looks pretty decent. So. Let's right click on this, insert another video track, and then we're gonna add the actual explosion now. So in the folder, go ahead and drag in the explosion and fire. It's right there. We're going to right click on the file, go to properties, go to media, and then we're going to go to alpha channel and make sure it's a straight unmatted, hit okay. And that's gonna remove the black background. So from here, we're gonna decide where we want it to start, which starts off pretty good, I think, right there. So we're just gonna position it now. Let's trim this back, zoom back in here, click your timeline, go one frame back so we see the Pokeball, drag this back there, open the crop tool. We could even go forward a frame or two actually, drag it back a couple more so we can actually see the fire. So right here is where the fire is going to be. So we wanna just line it up right on that Pokeball. So let's drag it into place. That looks pretty good there. So let's drag that out and let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. So what we can do is have this explosion start a little bit before the Pokeball disappears. So let's drag that a couple frames. Right there looks pretty good, so. That looks good. So right when the fire starts, you see the black start to seep in, the burn marks. We could even slow that down because it takes a second for things to get charged. So 10 seconds fade in from the black looks pretty good. All right. Next thing we want to do is make the fire look a little more realistic. So let's brighten it up by going to video effects, going to brightness and contrast, adding the default on it. Then we're going to drag the brightness up to 
around the 0.5 area anywhere around that area is not bad so we just want it bright for the initial explosion then we can make it fade down so let's split the clip right where we want the fire to start and then we're going to duplicate this last part hold control and drag to the right click on the duplicated track and then click the effects button and let's delete it so now it looks like real fire again and then we're going to click here we're going to delete this one bring this one in its place and let's drag it in three let's drag it in a few so it merges so there we go so it's a white initial and then it goes into real fire so that looks a little more realistic when i'm adding these pop-in effects i like to render the clip into one solid file and then i can add shake and i can add zoom effects and any kind of flares and like that so i'm gonna skip ahead for you okay so now that i got the file in here we see that it is our entire thing which is nice. So now we can add some visual effects and we only have to work with one video file so we don't have to add this on multiple things. That's something I like to do. So let's figure out where the explosion starts, which is right about there. So from this point, all the way to the max peak of it, we wanna zoom in. So we're gonna add some brightness to this one because your whole screen gets bright. I don't know if you've looked at a grenade explode, but usually it's really bright. So we're gonna add brightness and contrast to this section. And we're going to click the animate button, click down in the timeline so we know we're starting here, drag it to the very end, and increase it to, well, let's just say five, something like that. So let's see what that looks like. We take a frame back, it looks pretty bright, which is good. So that's that. So that looks good. Boom. Next, we're going to add another effect. Let's go ahead and see. We're going to go over to light rays, and we're just going to add one of these. Let's see what intense looks like. That looks pretty good. So let's see what that looks like in motion. You know, I like that so much, I'm gonna continue it over here. Let's split that and drag this light ray there. So we want that to last a little longer. So if I want the light ray to fade in and then fade out, an easy way of doing that is right click, insert a video track, select both of them by holding control, duplicate them, and then we could ungroup them and delete these audio tracks that go with them so they're out of the way. And then we can fade this in, say like three frames, fade this one back three frames. Select the bottom clip and the effect, delete it. Bottom clip, effect, delete it. So from here, we have our light rays fading in and out. And that looks pretty good. Next, we can add some sound. So let's go back to that folder and we could add the fire sound. Let's start that there. So this fire sounds pretty quiet. So I like to drag the volume up and then right click, insert remove envelope and then click volume and then drag that up. So we have fire. So we start the fire sound right when fire happens, which right about there is when fire happens. Let's fade that in. Let's get our explosion sound and drag that down on a new timeline because we don't want it too loud. Let's trim it up, bring it back. The explosion starts right about here. Pretty good. We can decrease that volume a couple decibels. Not bad at all. Let's trim these to the end of the clip. Zoom back in here. So now we want to add some shake and zoom. So again, I'm going to do what I like and render this whole thing it's to one clip. And I'm going to skip ahead. Okay, I've rendered that clip and it's in one track. Let's take a look at it real quick. Not looking bad. So what I want to do is zoom in a little bit right when the explosion starts. So let's split the clip and then let's take a look at it by opening the crop tool and then we could see frame by frame where we want to zoom in so from here how about at the peak of its brightness let's zoom in like that much and then let's go back to normal right about there so that looks pretty good so next, you may not have this one. I have the new blue effects and they have an earthquake little filter here. It means it kind of zooms in the camera and auto shakes it. So I have a couple presets that I'm gonna put down just to add a little bit of effect. 
you may not have these, so you may not be able to do this part unless you go ahead and purchase the new blue effects, which they are totally worth it, let me tell you. So let's add those into here. See what that looks like. Doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna let's add them into the beginning too and see what that looks like all together. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. And so that does it. That is a pretty quick tutorial on the basics of how to make an explosion or something explode into fire. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that video. If that helped you out at all or if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.